Police launch investigation into return of Chin Ping's ashes. Malaysia calls for high-tech investments from South Korea. Good afternoon. Welcome to News on 2. I'm Jessica Lee. Now, the police have opened an investigation paper on the case where the ashes of former Communist Party of Malaya or CPM leader Chin Ping being returned to Malaysia. Bukit Aman Criminal Investigation Department Director Datuk Huzir Muhammad said the case is being investigated under Section 504 and 505 of the Penal Code as well as Section 233 of the Communications and Multimedia Act 1998. Apa yang kita siasat ini adalah boleh menimbulkan suasana tidak harmoni. Yang itu kita siasat. Why uh, benda ini dibawa masuk dan uh, boleh menimbulkan, disiarkan dan boleh menentangkan uh, suasana yang tidak harmoni. Speaking at a media conference in Bukit Aman, Datu Huzir said the police would also investigate which route or mode of transportation was used, adding that his team in Bukit Aman was cooperating with Perak police to identify those who brought back the ashes. On a related note, Home Minister Tan Sri Mudin Yassin said the government has never allowed the ashes of Chin Peng to be brought home to Malaysia. And Tan Sri Mudin said based on the guidelines on bringing back and taking out the ashes of someone, a family member or anyone at all must inform the Royal Malaysian Customs Department. Soal yang berbangkit sama ada pihak yang terbabit ini telah uh, mendapat apa-apa kebenaran kelulusan untuk membawa masuk ke itu ataupun dia diseludup masuk ke negara kita uh, dengan tidak diketahui oleh pihak berkuasa. Uh, pastinya di pengkat kita, kita tak tahu langsung uh, kerana hanya lepas saja kenyataan itu dikeluarkan oleh sama ada keluarga ataupun sahabat handai uh, mendiang ini barulah kita tahu perkara itulah dilakukan. Speaking in Bangkok, Thailand, Tan Sri Muhyiddin says several quarters had lodged police reports and the matter would be investigated in detail and appropriate action would be taken. He also stressed that the government did not want the issue to be raised again as it could create anger, especially to the family of victims of communist violence. Now, on another matter, Tan Sri Muhyiddin said the police are investigating the Malaysian flag with a five-pointed star incident from several angles in accordance with penal code. The Home Minister said proper action would be taken after the investigations are completed, adding that the incident has sparked dissatisfaction and anger among Malaysians despite the organizer's apology. And kita tidak mau hal-hal sebegini terus berlaku dan dilakukan oleh sesiapa sekalipun. Jadi ini pihak uh, polis akan menyiasat daripada beberapa sudut uh, kanun jenayah. Uh, uh, ada peruntukan yang telah disediakan yang uh, boleh digunakan pakai untuk tujuan itu. Tapi biarlah tunggu hasil siasatan nanti barulah kita dapat tahu apa tindakan-tindakan yang wajar yang boleh diambil uh, dalam kes ini. Last Monday, in a viral video posted on Facebook, the inaccurate flag featured a five-pointed star that was shown on the stadium TV screen as the national anthem was played during the opening ceremony of a basketball championship organized by the Malaysian Basketball Association, or MABA. Following the incident, MABA had issued an apology and said it would take full responsibility for the incident. Now, Malaysia would like to see investments in high-tech manufacturing and has always been open to foreign investments regardless of geographic origins and sectors. Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad said Malaysia would like to see investments in high-tech manufacturing like those in the Fourth Industrial Revolution or IR 4.0, renewable energy such as solar and wind and services that create respectable paying jobs. This, the Premier added, is a sign of maturing Malaysian economy that is on the cusp of breaking into the ranks of high-income nations. On top of this, Malaysia offers trained workforce and high English proficiency, a peaceful, stable, polyglot society, ready access to the whole of ASEAN and open economy investor-friendly environment, strong protection of intellectual property rights, 
and patterns, as well as superb rural rail, rural rail port and internet infrastructure, which is second best only next to our neighbor state. He said this at a roundtable meeting with South Korean captains of industry in Seoul. The roundtable gathered captains of industry from 29 companies led by Korean Trade, Industry and Energy Minister Yu Myung-hee. Promoting Malaysia further, Dr. Mahathir said there has been a reform initiative being made by the government, shifting from government-driven growth to its private sector-driven growth. Malaysia is already placed 15th in the World Bank's 2018 Ease of Doing Business report and it expects these ongoing reforms will improve Malaysia's position further. This will make Malaysia an attractive investment destination for Korean industries. South Korea ranks as the fifth largest foreign investor in Malaysia. As of 2018, a total of 376 manufacturing projects with South Korean participation have been implemented with total investment worth $7.83 billion. Meanwhile, Tun Dr. Made has called on the Malaysian diaspora in South Korea to emulate the country's work ethics and positive traits while subsequently acquiring their advanced knowledge and technologies. The Premier said knowledge without good values can be harmful, but instilling ethics in everyday life, including work, has proven beneficial for the betterment of humanity. That is why I say having a good value system is very important. Because whatever you get, whatever new discoveries that you find, you should use it for the good of humanity, not for killing people. He was speaking at a dinner and evening with Tun Dr. Martin Mohammed with some 200 Malaysians in Seoul on Wednesday night. The Prime Minister also advised the diaspora to eventually return home and serve the country, adding that the government is always doing its best to attract even more high technology companies to invest in Malaysia so as to provide more high value jobs across the chain. Tun Dr. Mahathir and spouse Tun Dr. Siti Hasma Muhammad Ali is on an official visit to Seoul after attending the ASEAN South Korean Commemorative Summit 2019 in Busan. Chief Justice Tan Sri Tanku Maimun Tuan Mat said it is vital that judges should always endeavour to write grounds of judgment. She said it is so, especially in the context of judges who are not able to respond to criticism, adverse or baseless allegations. Tan Sri Tanku Maimun also said that the judgment of a court of law can be used as a judicial precedent by other courts as a source for future decision making. It has been said that we could not publicly respond to those comments and that we as judges may only respond to our judgments. She said this in a speech at the launch of the Malaysian Judiciary Yearbook 2018 and the Journal of the Malaysian Judiciary 2019 at the Palace of Justice, Putrajaya. Tan Sri Tanku Maimun said the Journal of the Malaysian Judiciary is a compendium of scholarly articles of various areas of the law. She said the yearbook discloses a complete overview of the significant events and activities of the judiciary for this year. Also present at the launch was Federal Court Judge Dato Rohana Yusuf, who has been appointed as Acting Court of Appeal President from 25th of November after the retirement of Court of Appeal President Tan Sri Ahmad Marup on the 24th of November. Research and development in the agriculture sector need to be intensified to benefit small-scale farmers. Former Council of Eminent Persons Chairman and former Finance Minister Tun Dr. Daim Zainuddin says such research should also place greater emphasis on palm oil plantation as it is the country's main commodity. On the way forward for the agriculture industry, Tun Dr. Daim said it also lies within expanding and developing coconut plantations due to increased demands for coconut-based products instead of oil palm or paddy. Rubber also the price has come down. Hmm? Now the, so the small days are suffering. So then I've been discussing with them. If uh, they are suffering, Yet, the manufacturers are making money. How do you balance this? Eh? Eh? Like, 
So I have been suggesting that we should sit down and discuss macam mana so that they, on one hand, the manufacturer can make money, but how do you assist the smallholders? During the nation's building conversations titled Poverty in Malaysia, Reality versus Perception at Sunway University, Dun Dr. Daim also said that Malaysia uses highest percentage of its agricultural land for palm oil plantation, followed by rubber plantation. He also added that the nation should also find ways to help young people to venture into the agriculture sector by introducing new modern technologies which would attract this group and help reduce the unemployment rate. He also said adopting precision technology would make the sector more attractive to the younger generation while making the sector more productive. Agriculture and agro-based industry ministry will limit the exports of certain species of fish, including mackerel and shrimp scat fish, during the monsoon season. The export limit begins this month until next February. His Minister Datuk Sri Salahuddin Ayub said his ministry has been discussing with the Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs Ministry in ensuring the supply is adequate with no price increase. Demikian juga dalam hadapi musim tujuh ini kita telah kita telah uh, membuat beberapa persiapan termasuklah saya difahamkan setiap tahun ya uh, uh, jabatan perikanan kita telah uh, menghalang beberapa jenis ikan kita untuk diekspor atau uh, di antara apa macam ikan kembung ya dan ikan selar ini kita tidak bila berlaku di musim tujuh ini kita tengok indeks kita kalau kurang kita tidak benarkan untuk ekspor buat sementara waktu ya dan kalau tidak cukup kita kena importlah ha itu kita biasalah tu ya yang 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 penting kita jamin bekalan itu cukup Datuk Sri Salahuddin said this to reporters at the 2019 National Farmers, Livestock Breeders and Fishermen Day HPPNK Carnival in Johor Bahru Touching on the HPPNK event this year, he said the ministry targeted 500,000 visitors during the four days of the carnival with sales target of 30 million ringgit. A total of 350 entrepreneurs would be involved in the expo, which would be exhibiting numerous types of products such as agro-based industry products, fruits and vegetables and numerous others. Meanwhile, Datuk Sri Salahuddin said he is ready to be questioned by the Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad if there is any proof or evidence of wrongdoing for personal gains by him. Now, he said this following a controversy over a paddy tender worth 1.4 billion ringgit to the National Farmers Organization or NAFAS, which was made through direct negotiations. Datuk Sri Salahuddin also said that all his officers have the right not to support him if the allegation was found to be true. I deserve it because I have not done that. But if it's not true, I will not do it. If it's not true, I will not do it. Sana petani, sana nelayan, peternak yang kita anggap anda semua adalah wira-wira negara. Jangan mengkhianati mereka. Meanwhile, he said the transfer of the Ministry Secretary General, Dato Muhammad Salihuddin Hassan, to the Public Services Department is a normal procedure. Datuk Sri Salahuddin said he did not interfere in the transfer, which was under the jurisdiction of the Chief Secretary to the Government, Tan Sri Dr. Ismail Baka, and the JPA. Now, the public, especially those living along rivers and lowlands in Kelantan, are reminded to prepare for any possibility of floods following the uncertain and unpredictable weather conditions. Kelantan Police Chief Dato Hassanuddin Hassan also reminded those living in flood-prone areas to keep their belongings and valuables in safe places. Selalu dengar radio ke baca sahabat ke ataupun lah 
Tapi uh, minta juga pada mereka yang ni supaya tidak mendengar berita-berita yang kita boleh tentu lagi kesahihan berita tersebut. Ha, tu. Jadi kalau berita tu tidak nak mengesahkan berita tu betul atau tidak, telefonlah pihak pilihan. Hmm. Ya. Ha, tu. Sebab saya tak nak kalau terima berita yang tidak betul yang boleh membuat seseorang itu panik. Datuk Hasanuddin said this when appearing as a guest on Kelantan FM radio station in Kota Baru. He also reminded everyone not to wait until the last moment to move to a safer place in the event of floods. The national football midfielder Muhammad Irfan Zakaria just wants to focus on realizing his mission of winning the SEA Games gold medal for the time being. The 24-year-old who is sought after by some teams from the Malaysian League or the M League for the 2020 season has confirmed that he does not want to make hasty decisions during the SEA Games campaign. Mohamed Irfan, who played for Kuala Lumpur in 2016 to help the City Boys move to the Super League after winning the Premier League in 2017, has yet to make a decision on his future after the team was relegated to the second division. Masa sekarang ada beberapa pasukan, tapi macam saya kata saya fokus pada si game dan balik Malaysia saya akan buat keputusan dengan itu. Muhammad Irfan along with Adam Nur Azlin, 23, were two of the older players in the under-22 squad for the Southeast Asia sports campaign where the team tied one all against Myanmar in the Group A opener on Monday. Barisan Kertinjen, 11 negara, Trini bersatu dengan semangat kesukanan. Siaran langsung, Majlis Perasmian Pembuka, Sukar Si Filipina 2019, Sabtu 30 November, 8 Mar, TV Sati dan RGM Sports. And that concludes this afternoon's edition of News on 2. In our top story, police launch investigations into return of Chin Ping's ashes. Join us again at 7pm for more updates on the latest happenings around the world. Thank you for watching. I'm Jessica Lee.